Okay, we're at the Food Stop Cafe in Quat, and we're off, heading in the direction of Ludlow. Come with us and uh, enjoy the ride. Steady away, obviously, today, because it's, uh, it's a nice day, the sun's out, the sun's shining. We're going to be pressing on a little bit, though, because we've got places to be. We're heading down to Devon for a Dave Thorpe Enduro Day. There's probably going to be a video on that as well, I expect. So we're just uh, gathering our thoughts at the minute. We're in, a, we're in a speed restricted area, so no need to go too mad just yet. But we're going to be putting into practice some of the um, some of the techniques we use when we're when we're riding. Observation being the key thing. Get get that view as far ahead as you possibly can. Like even here, you know, the tree line is telling us where the road's going. Look at a cross view. So look across to the left. You can see where that tree line is. The road's obviously going to go around that way. So can I see over the hedge to what's coming around this corner before we get there? Using that early vision to help plan the ride. Using all the signage, using all the clues, using that paint in the road, looking at the hazard lines, you know, the longer ones, looking at the slows painted in the road, it all tells a story. And if you add it all together, that becomes what you need to use to, to ride with. So good observations lead to good planning. Get a plan in your head. What am I going to do next? And then, at the simultaneously, often, think of another plan. If the plan A doesn't work, you need to instantly switch to plan B. You can't be thinking about, or oh, what happens if, what happens now? It's like, well, you know, that plan didn't come off, so, um, no. Just immediately switch to your second plan. Have a backup. We want to eliminate thinking time. Have a look at the um, like stopping distances and all that sort of stuff. They always include a thinking time to them. You know that that period of time when absolutely nothing is happening. <laughs> you know, nobody's applying the brakes, nobody's moving, nobody's doing anything else. If you can cut that right down by having a pre-prepared plan, all you've got to do is execute it, and off we go. So this is a beautiful town of Bridge North. And we're going to go uh, left, left, left. See the road signs there? It's got the um, road works, that sort of thing. Just looking at what's coming down onto the roundabout. We call this red car going away. You're into the national speed limits. And away. Nice ride road. Looking all the way up to the top. You can see the road splits into two, so there's no point doing anything now. Just be a little bit patient, and then it's much, much easier. So keeping her eyes pinned, we've got a motorcyclist up ahead. So we're catching them up. So already starting to think, well, which way are they going to be going? Are they going to be in front of us? What's their riding style like? Are they going to cause us any concerns? Roll into a roundabout, so which way are they going to go? We're going to go left. So just look into the right. What's the car doing? Bug's gone away, so we can roll and round. Eyes oh, pinned at the exit point. There it is. And immediately up behind another car. Road's gone quite narrow now. 
so we need to pick our moments and just use the power of that bike just to get past these cars keeping that position around to the outside of corners helps us get a better view around them earlier so now we've got a slow moving vehicle up ahead of us so if we're going to overtake this car we're going to get held up by the slow moving one ahead so we can practice a bit of patience here because we might need the opportunity to have one easy overtake than another one just looking up the inside just moving the bike around to get that view you've got to have a view, if you haven't got a view you can't do anything looking at the paint in the road, looking at the sign, just looking past the vehicles don't just get stuck up behind them what's happening in front so that was fortuitous and look on the right there roadwork signs. Roadwork signs generally mean traffic lights. So, bide time a bit. No point putting in the best overtake in the world just to get uh, stuck at a red light. We might be able to do something sneaky at the red light to get past the slow moving one without putting anybody in any any particular risk. So the road's narrowing on our side. Road narrows to the left side. So that means the, the roadworks or whatever is going to be on our side. So try and get yourself in a position where you can see what's going on. Okay. Little black car ahead. There's the red traffic light. Stop in here so I can see the red traffic light. No point pulling right up behind the, uh, behind the lorry so I can't see. Somebody's hedge cut into the left. That's what that sound is. <laughs> it's not me fans kicking in. So, you can still see the red light, we've got a big truck coming around, so we just have to move out of the way for that one a little bit, give up our position for, a, you know, a bit of safety. And now we're looking at the flow of traffic, because all these guys have just got through on their green light, and eventually they're going to stop. Well, there's always a bit of a pause, well, not this day and age, because everybody jumps the red lights, but... If you time it right, you know the lorry's going to be slow away. There's our last car. There's the green. Let the car go off. He's not expecting us to be doing that. And we've got past the truck. Now this looks to be like some sort of souped up thing. So we'll just stereotype this car a little bit. Has it got a, a young person on board? And yeah, it does look like they want to crack on, so... Absolutely happy with that. Crack on. It's not a problem at all. We'll just follow you. you can, we'll use your eyeballs to see around corners for us. Thank you very much. If they start putting their brakes on around the corner, well, we better start slowing down too. Some big agricultural kit coming around, so just keep that in mind. Next time we come around a corner, there might be something there. Keep your eyes on the hedges for triangle signs. They'll tell you what's going to happen. Moving over to the left here for an early view around the right-hander. There's our view. And now we can get past it. Using that gearbox just to slow the bike down a little bit, because then you, then we're in a nice gear for the corners. As long as you can get the right gear, obviously, and not fluff gear changes. Just look in the middle of the road. There's a lot of sort of um, muck dropped, wet, slippy, carry effluent type muck in the road. So now we're thinking. There might be some sort of tractor or truck or something dropping that. And we just saw something disappearing around a the corner there. Now this is hampering lines a little bit because it's, it's pretty slippy old stuff. That looks to be the culprit up ahead. 
So staying out, see if we can get an early inside view, outside view. And also letting the lorry driver know that we're uh, we're there. Let's just put ourselves in his mirror for a little bit. They're usually pretty good at seeing. Got an inside view? Nope. He's all the way over the road, so that tells us nothing's on coming, so we can have a little sneaky look. Don't fancy it. Not just yet. He's using all the road up. Move back over when we can't see. The amount of road he's using is sort of putting a blocker on so he can see what's coming round. And now we can go. Straighten those corners up, ready for the next left hander. Chevron's in the hedge, tell us how sharp it's going to be. The Chevron's a race. Tell you there's a corner coming up. People don't put chevrons on corners for any reason. They cost money to put up. So if they put one set up, great. If they put another new set up with a highlighted background, it means probably two or three people have gone through the hedge at that point and, and knocked their sign down. So use that. These high hedges make us need a, uh, a limit point of vision technique. So looking at the point where those hedges meet, that's our limit point of vision. As it's coming towards us like it is now, the corner's getting sharper. As it goes away from us like then, the corner's opening up. So keep your eyes pinned on that limit point of vision. If it comes towards you, the corner's getting sharper. If it stays a static distance away from you, it's a constant radius corner. And if it goes away from you, the corner's opening up. So that's how you can read the road. Really, really practice that. Can't stress that enough. It's a fantastic tool once you get it right. Using the triangle signs, there's the S-Bend. Looking up over the top of the hedge, trying to get that cross view in again. There's our chevrons with the highlighted background, so roll it off a bit. Looking for the right-hander. We had the S-Bend sign, and now we can pick it up, and off we go. Giveaway sign coming up, so just rolling it off. Into the village, and expecting a giveaway. Okay, the giveaway's for the narrow. We've got a giveaway. Nothing coming round. And off we go again. Corner's coming towards us, tip it in, there's a point. Now it's gone away. So enjoy identifiers going away. You can stand the bike back up on the throttle. And off we go. Corner's coming in, roll it off, limit point of vision. Round we go again. S bend sign, first right then left. Give a bit up on the in on the first one. Looking for the next one. Dipping it in. Eyes on the exit. Left hand corner sign. Over to the right hand side of it. Another s -Bend sign coming up. Got a car ahead, coming into a village. So just rolling off. Big crossroad sign. It's all just adding to the information that we've got.
inside view. Rolling up to the car in the right gear, just waiting for that opportunity. But we're hunting for it. We're looking at the road, we're looking at what's going on, we're looking at the traffic conditions, we're looking at the hedges, we're looking at everything we can see. And as soon as that opportunity arises, we're good to go. There's another slow moving vehicle up ahead. We've got a long curve. We've got a chap there on the right, he's okay, he's turned out the way. No. Nope. Into the left, over to the right, and round we go. Steady away. Don't need to position so much in the uh, in the lower speed areas. We position for vision and stability, but when we're going fairly steady, the advantages aren't really there. We've just gone into a 40. We're expecting a national speed limit sign fairly soon, so keep your eyes pinned on that one. There it is. And now we're just rolling on steady. Just giving a bit of time for our guy who's following to catch up. He'll be along shortly. So whilst we're just having to relax, we can just pick up on this uh, on this limit point of vision again. The farthest point you can see where it looks like the two hedges are touching, that's your limit point of vision. If it's moving towards you, or it looks like it's moving directly towards you, there's a corner coming up. If it keeps on moving towards you, it's quite a sharp corner. Using other vehicles like vans, etc. to give us an indicator of how sharp a corner is. You know, how fast did that come around the corner? Is it a, you know, did it... Did it come around slowly? Did it look like it was on full lean? You know, all little clues telling you what you need to be looking for. So just rolling up behind another couple. Tomorrow, and these nice trees on this side. They're beautiful, aren't they? There's our view around the corners. Just get a glimpse up the inside. The car behind is wanting to overtake, so take that into account. He wants to get past the, the camper van. So if we're going to do a move, we need to be really careful now that that car isn't going to move out and and come out alongside us at the same time. So, okay, they've gone. Plenty of time there, perfectly fine. That's all right. We're still, uh, we're still just ticking over at the minute. You've got the arrows there telling us it's going to be a solid white line coming up. A few more signposts telling us some things that we need to know. We're just checking in the mirrors. There's a few, uh, there's a few cars to overtake behind, so our man will catch up any second. But we're just staying back from this camper van. No need to be right up behind it because that spoils the view. So in the mirrors, we can see our man behind us. It's probably time to get going again. Let's go. Let 
moving in slightly for the oncoming cars just adapt that position slightly treat cars parked on the uh, on the left there as as they might pull out and now we've got the behind our black car again you can just go through here and time that properly and off we go limit point of vision opens up off we go again got the arrows that's telling us there's going to be some white lines white lines tend to mean it's a bit more twisty it's a bit more bendy they don't want you overtaking for whatever reason over to the left for the right hander get an earlier view and we go Picking up on the corner signs, picking up on the slows in the road. Got another car coming up. Immediately start thinking about any overtakes that we might need. Inside view there is clear. Just rolled it round past the outside. That inside view looked all the way up the road there. And if you're not looking for it, you don't see them. Just rolling it through, trying to keep it as smooth as we can. Limit point of vision. To the right, it's staying stationary. The corner's staying as it is. Around we go again. A couple more, coming up around a couple more vehicles immediately starting to look for overtakes okay staying out looking for a landing spot staying out until it looks a bit too dodgy we've got the view around the outside now we've lost the view so we can nip it back in you can see where the corners go we had the triangle signs there we're expecting this vehicle to be as slow off the off the corner. There was something just coming round. So we'll try that again. Let's see if we can get an inside view. Anything up the inside? Can't see. Got an S-Bend sign coming up. That might open our view up a little bit. Just dropping back to get a wider angle behind the car, behind the truck. Counting what's coming down. Get a snapshot in the old mind as to what's ahead. Make a plan. And then as the cot opens up, inside view, inside view, clear. Check, go. Staying out because we've got the view. And pulling it back in. And round we go. Keeping that drive on in the corner, settles the bike down. It's more than happy with a little bit of little bit of drive. Just whilst it's rolled over. Backing it down again, we can see a load of houses up ahead, we can see a load of uh, elements that might mean we're coming into a 30, and there it is. So again, just poodled through, respect the 30s. Give yourself time to have a bit of a breather, a bit of a relax.
into the 40s, so we're coming out of the village, so now we're expecting a national anywhere time soon. Anytime soon. There they are. What does Bruce say? Nationals! Brilliant. Just tuned in on now. We've got a um, crossroads coming up and a giveaway sign, so no need to go mad. Can we get an early view? Left and right. Off to Ludlow, look. Lovely Ludlow. And just settling down in. New road. New dynamic. See what it's like. It's a bit wider. Still got the hazard lines up the middle. Looks to be a bit busier. Taking that into account. Make it part of the plan. We can go from there. We can take the scenery as well. Look at those... Beautiful fluffy clouds. The Orb, 1982. Roundabouts, planning to, looking to stop, planning to go, just mesh in, mesh. And another truck up ahead of us, looking for an inside view on the approach. It seems though that uh, road designers build roads with these really long curves in them, so you can't actually see around anything. If they do that on purpose, probably. Fairly standard stretch of road these, just uh, be mindful of oncoming cars and the lurkers that sit behind slower moving vehicles oncoming, so you want to be able to see them and they need to be able to see you. So just concentrate on your own positioning. Even though the road doesn't look like uh, that entertaining. Squeeze through there just before the, uh, the slip road on the left. You can see there was nothing there, not really an issue. Just coming into a bit of traffic, which is fine. But still thinking, full overtake of the need arises. The car in front just moved over slightly, so it'd be rude not to take that uh, that opportunity. And we can just start picking some of these off. There's a junction there to the right. It's all closed off with this hatching area. Looking up the inside, we've got the slower moving car that's holding everybody up, moving away. Keep that view as far ahead as you can. What's stopping us? What's the slow up? Who's causing the tailbacks? What cars are in the queue? Is there anybody looking like they want to overtake? That's when we do overtake. Just roll it on nice and steady. Just be ready for other things happening. Mm -hmm. 
just peeking out for an outside view. What can we see coming up? So we're looking at the road ahead. We're looking at the string of cars up ahead. Just picking them off every now and again, just to keep the old average speed ticking over. And now into the left, so looking through the junction. Round we go. Round we go again. Now we're on to another, another little road, which I don't think we've been down before. Look, the bins are out. We know what that means, don't we? If we put the bins out. So rolling on steady again, just picking up on the road signage and what we can see. Seems to be a nice quiet road at the minute. Got a tree line there, tells us the road's going around to the right, even though we can't see it. Moving over for the tractor, giving plenty of space. Staying over to the left of the right hander so we get a better view around the corner. Tree line's opening up, got a bit of an avenue going on there, so where's the next corner coming from? There it is, not on the left left-hand corner, we've got the chevrons, we're just rolling off. A bit of dampness on the road under these trees. Just keeping our eye on things to the left and right. Fairly steady away at the minute, nothing on ahead of us that we can see so far. So we're just cruising on, just enjoying the scenery. Corner coming up, just getting down to the right gear. Nice responsive gear for the corner, tip it in, wind the throttle on a bit. That positive throttle around the corner just keeps the speed up. Bikes will naturally slow down in the corner anyway because of physics and stuff. We've got to counteract that, and if we do counteract it nicely, the bike will feel very much more planted in a corner. If you're rolling around on a closed throttle, the bike will feel like it wants to tip into the corner. Trying to avoid the best of the poles. And the big trucks. And now we've got a car ahead of us. Nice early view. Back over for the right-hander. Straightening the corners out if we can. If we've got both view both sides, we can do that. s Ben sign coming up. We've got some chevrons. We're immediately looking for the other corner when there's an S-Bend. Use those poles to give you an indicator of how sharp the corner is. Now get a cross view up over the hedge. See the hedge line there? That's how sharp a corner is, so now we know how much steering to put in. We've already picked it up. So that limit point of vision, yeah, it's useful if you haven't got a cross view, but cross views are <laughs> where it is, where it's all at. If you could already see the tightness of a corner miles away, then that's part of your planning already done. That's Ben sign again. Watch out for the cars that are on the other side of the road, avoiding uh, avoiding branches. Big S bend sign. Nice little section that there. Go back and rewind that one. See how that positioning around the corner completely avoided anything nasty happening because the car is on the wrong side of the road as we came round it. Oh, but you should be able to stop at the distance you can see to be clear on your side of the road. Yeah, you should. So 
just trying to roll through this set. Picking up on the corner marking posts. No nod. Corner marker posts, tip it in out of the way of the oncoming cars, move it back out again for the out corner. Driving it round. Nice time to have a quick look at the view up over the hedge, it's beautiful. More corner marker posts. Cross view. Wind it up. And relax. Nice little section that, some quite um some quite sharpy old corners in that one. And the danger is that you tip into a corner and you just assume it's gonna come up again. But if they carry on going round that can catch you out, so keep your eyes pinned on that limit point of vision. If it's not moving, then stay where you are. If it's not moving any further away from you, then you know you're in the corner still. So only if it starts to move away can you start to pick the bike up. Don't assume what the corner's doing, you've got to read what it's doing. It's a nice little village, lovely, 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 lovely. Just time to listen to that, uh, that death rattle in the engine, you know. It'll be fine. Moving over early. Forward to park cars. Moving back in again for the oncoming. The whole idea, or you know, you've got a, like a personal ethos or a personal thing there you ride. It's best not to just uh, upset anybody else. You know, don't cause anybody else to brake, to swerve, to slow down, to make allowances for you. If you can ride without interfering with anybody, then you're doing a good job in my book. Oh, this is nice. Resist the temptation to hoy the cyclist over the bridge into the water. Wouldn't have done it anyway. Looks like we're coming out of the village. We're just looking for the uh, speed change. There it is. Nationals! And off we go again. Got a couple of cars up ahead. but we want to be turning off. Well, it's a car and a bike, actually. So we're coming up behind another bike. Always a bit funny, isn't it, coming up behind bikes? But the car is overtaking the bike, so that tells us all we need to know about that bike. As we get a little bit closer, we can see he's got a really chopped down L-plate sticker on the back. Give him plenty of plenty of berth. <laughs> Give him a wide girth. And roll on past. Nice little wave to say, yeah, you're doing well there, buddy. Keep it up. Stuff coming in from the left there. Just get out of the way of it. Cover the brakes if you need to. We don't know what they're going to do. We don't know if they're going to stop or not. But we've seen them, so that makes it our responsibility to do something about it. Uh, no, I'm not going to say it again. Don't like stealing other people's catchphrases. Last time I did that was Ted Rogers and Dusty Bin. So steady away again. 
nice bit of a road. Now we've been going for at least 40 minutes, so I know the man behind us is probably desperate for a, a smoko break, which tends to lower the average speed considerably. But it's fine. Motorcycling is one of those um, very personal yet social things, so it's good to stop and have a chat every now and again. Otherwise, you're only going to get to your destination three hours quicker than you expected. So take time for it. Start hunting for a nice place to live. Stop. What we need is something nice to look at and maybe a bin for comedy value. Well, this looks nice. And shade and a bin. Perfect. 